I'd like to say, incidentally, that an admission should be made on my part insofar as music is concerned, one that I shouldn't make in a state like Pennsylvania, which has been voting Republican, but this is something you should know. You should know everything about all your candidates. You see, I used to play the piano. <laughs> I'll just promise you one thing, folks. If we're elected, I'll give it up, believe me. <laughs> and one other thing, you can be sure I can tell you this, I never have played the Missouri Waltz. <laughs> November the 4th, Republicans are going to vote for Eisenhower. Yes, independents are going to vote for Eisenhower. But also, you're going to find that California Democrats and Texas Democrats and Massachusetts Democrats, Oklahoma Democrats and Pennsylvania Democrats are going to join with millions of other good Democrats all over the country to throw the Truman Democrats out of Washington, D.C. my very careful examination of the facts in Washington, I find that there were three important differences. In the first place, the British urged that we not cross the 38th parallel. This, however, was compromised and we went ahead. But after that, the British urged, and the State Department and the Joint Chiefs of Staff supported them, that we maintain a neutrality zone of about 40 miles away from the Manchurian border in order to prevent any border clashes with Chinese troops. This was one of the main reasons why President Truman went to Wake Island to work this out with General MacArthur, and this was agreed to. Later, when we were in serious difficulty with the Chinese, the State Department sent an urgent message asking MacArthur to make a public statement telling the Chinese that we would not bomb their big dams along the Yellow River, that we would protect them, but unfortunately, MacArthur sent back a very curt message in which he replied, I do not concur. I think it's the height of immorality that men, young men, should be taken from their lives and calling and sent to battle from whence they may never come. Some of them may never come, and some, many of them will come, but broken shadows and specters of their former self, and yet leave those people on the home front to profiteer and to enrich themselves while men are fighting to save them.
conceptualize any attack here by an enemy as the signal for a sort of group vacation on the part of a great many city dwellers. Now, no picture could ignore reality more tragically than this. It's time to get tough with ourselves over this question of what will happen if we're attacked. There will be no mass stampede from our critical target areas for the simple reason that no such stampede will be permitted by our state and local authorities who are responsible for your safety and welfare and our national security. Every community must be defended to the utmost. There will be no retreat from the production line. There will be no voluntary surrender of a single machine or a single home that might help our armed forces to wage war. When the average American understands that to stay in his city is to fight, then he will stay and fight. In those circumstances, he would prefer to have his wife and children with him rather than to have them homeless transients, unless that is absolutely necessary. I am convinced that this is the American way of today and of tomorrow. For several weeks, we've studied thousands of ships manifest, and to our astonishment, we've learned that sizable quantities of vitally important supplies have been shipped to communist China. Not only have these shipments been made since the communists took control in China, but huge quantities have been sent there from our shores since the Korean War started. As a matter of fact, we've just brought to light the fact that a large shipment of steel sheets has gone from New York only a few days ago and is now on the high seas bound for communist China. This situation, which I think is deplorable, has been brought about by trans-shipping of vital materials from other countries into the United States and then having them reshipped from our ports. It is my determination to continue this vigorous investigation to bring to light all facts in this important matter so that we can force action by the federal agencies to plug these loopholes. Mr. Ambassador, can you tell us what your government's position is on the Kashmir dispute? All that Pakistan demands is the right of the people of Kashmir to a free and unfettered plebiscite. That is what justice demands, and Pakistan will not be content with anything less. Madam Ambassador, can you tell us how your country feels about over the Kashmir dispute? India has always recognized the right of the people of Kashmir to decide their own future. We stand by that pledge. It is Pakistan who, by continuing to maintain forces in illegal occupation, 
of a large part of the state is creating conditions in which the will of the people cannot be expressed. I'm certain that the people of Iowa are pleased to have an opportunity to receive some Russians and that uh, we Iowans would be happy to go over to Russia and give them some of our know-how. It's by that exchange that I think we can build towards peace and definitely a permanent peace. Whatever contribution we can make in that respect, I think we should be more than willing to make. And of course, as your governor, I'm willing to participate in the program. I'd be very happy to go over and visit with them, and I'll assure you that I'll do my best to sell the Russians on peace and also to sell them on our way of life. I have here an information against Harlan Carey Phillips of Adel for a charge with an improper pass, one mile east of Adel. Harlan, is this your uh, true name, Harlan Carey Phillips? That is correct. Officer, do you swear that this is your signature? Yes, Judge, I do. Harlan, do you uh, know your constitutional rights? Yes, I believe so. Do you wish to employ an attorney? No, I don't believe that's necessary. Well, I'll read you this information then. State of Iowa versus Harlan Carey Phillips. The Court of HL on it, Miss Dean Justice of the Peace, Adele Township, County of Dallas, State of Iowa. And the above named defendant is accused of the crime of improper passing. For that owner, about the sixth day, of December 1954, one mile east of Adele, 
In the county of Dallas, state of Iowa, the said defendant did unlawfully and willfully operate a motor vehicle, uh, license number 25-8580, did pass a mo another motor vehicle in a restricted zone, so marked by a yellow line with intent to do the same, contrary to the statutes in such cases made and provided in Section 321.304, 1954, Code of Iowa, signed by Wendell W. Streams of the Iowa Highway Patrol, subscribed in my presence and sworn before me by said Wendell Streams this sixth day of December, 1954, Signed H. L. Augustine, Justice of the Peace. I'll read you that section or under the code here. Prohibited passing. No vehicle shall, in overtaking and passing another vehicle, or at any time, other time, be driven to the left side of the roadway under the following. Approaching within 100 feet of any narrow bridge, viaduct, or tunnel when so signposted. Uh, I'm free now to accept a plea on this. Uh, how do you wish to plead to the charge, Harlan? Well, uh, all I'd like to say is that when I passed the car, uh, I didn't mean to uh, make a violation, but as I passed the car, I couldn't see the yellow line, but when I came in, I did come in on the yellow line. And in view of the facts, I imagine I should plead guilty. Well, it is the judgment of this court that you pay a fine of $10, plus the cost of this action, which is $3. And in lieu of non-payment of the fine, you will be required to spend three days in jail. Well, Harlan, I believe I'd be a little more careful from now on about these passes. 